that's around other people and it helps you for oh Kevin Binkley getting loose right there whoa man that was the first time we've seen him loose like that holy moly and he doesn't need to be driving that fast <laughs> whoo Binkley up front man driving the wheels off that thing like he's being chased by the cops or something okay let's get back here to wheel damage because I know we just got done seeing the leader pass him up but uh, running the skip barber today running seventh overall but top of his class Chev Matt that's the thing he is going to win his class today he could park the car right now if he wanted to and he's still going to win his class because he's the only one out there. But this this league has scored. Their scoring is totally different. Totally different than what you, you know, you're normally going to see in the league. Theirs is based on safety. Uh, that means less incidents on the track. That's off track, touching somebody, uh, speeding down pit road, anything that would cause an incident on the track. They're all about that safety. They give way to the other drivers. You got to be, you got to think about that. You got to communicate. Uh, they do have team speak. If you've got team speak, Chev Mac, uh, I, I'm not going to, I'll let Dog take care of that. I don't want to start like handing out his uh, team speak info, but if you've got team speak three, uh, they do, you're not required to be in team speak, but like he says, he tells a lot of people, it does really help when you're trying to communicate. Jimmy Eifling in sixth, and he is running third in his class in the BMW, but still running in sixth place. And it looks like Lewis Van may be off of the track here. Not sure. I'm going to see what. Uh, I don't know if he. Let's see. Okay, I, I haven't seen where he is. This yes. Uh, apparently, the damage that Lewis got earlier in the car and they fixed it ended up blowing just driving normally. So he's going to take a little break and then might join you in the booth again. All right. Yeah. Just uh, just let me know and I'll drag him down. All righty. Thank you, sir. Got another member uh, in Twitch chat here. Chev Mac, uh, he signed up for your league, really likes what he sees. So uh, I told him I, I would give him your team speak info, but that's up to you. I don't want to step on your toes uh, to do that while you're out there trying to drive. Yeah, I could join, but I wouldn't be able to give him any permissions until after the race anyways. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, I'll let, I told him that you would take it up with him later. No problem. All right, there you go, Chev Mac. Uh, you'll be all hooked up after the race when he gets done. He'll have to uh, get you in TeamSpeak, maybe a talk, or if you even have it. If you don't, you can go to TeamSpeak.com and download the client version of TeamSpeak 3. Might as well get the 64 bit. It's a little uh, cleaner, safer, and. I don't know if you're familiar with TeamSpeak 3, but if you are, then you probably already have it. All right, well, let's go back here a little further. Wheel damage in 7th. Fosbender in 8th. And by the sounds of it, it looks like Lewis Van is not going to be able to finish the race. So he is out and maybe joining me in the booth here in a little while. So we'll get to talk to, to uh, Lewis Van. He was second in his class. Okay, okay, well, uh, he can probably walk you through that after a bit here. I'm not sure. Uh, you'll, I'll let him take that up with you. I'm just the broadcaster here. B-B-I-A-B. 
What's that? Biob? Biob? Bi bi <laughs> All right, Darren queuing in fourth, second in his class to Renus. Renus running in third, but there's about a lap separating them two as the leader goes by Darren queuing now. Renus up here in third overall, top of his class in the BMW today, doing super. Man, what a race he is driving here today. Folks, I'm going to step away for another quick minute, but I'm going to throw up a quick uh, broadcast commercial for you to watch. So hang loose and stay.
All right, we're back. Thank you for giving me that short little break. Uh, okay, thank you there. Uh, I'll call you Izzy. I'm not going to say that word. Appreciate all you viewers hanging with me today. Uh, been great to have uh, some folks in here keeping me company. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you for uh, joining me here on Twitch and uh, make and following me. I appreciate all you guys. Uh, great to have followers here. I don't usually broadcast on Twitch. Uh, if you look underneath the, the broadcast there, you will see uh, a link that goes to my YouTube channel. Normally, I broadcast up to YouTube in 1080p HD. So, uh, but this league... Uh, uh, yeah I, I, yeah, I don't know there. You'll have to find out. Right, yeah, you, you got to be a league member. Thank you there, Kart Racer. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Lewis is ready for you. Oh, very cool. All right, I'll drag him down. All right, Lewis Van going to join me in the booth here. Give me a minute to get things sorted out here. Hey Lewis, welcome back, brother. Oh, not exactly where I'd like to be, but thanks for the welcome. <laughs> I know, I know. You just have really had a uh, the past couple of weeks have really had a lot of bad luck. That and a lot of it's been my stupidity and my <laughs> poor driving. But hey, it, it happens to the best of us. Right. Well, I hope you had fun out there. That's the main thing, having fun. It, it was a lot of fun. I just realized it sounded like a broken record happens to the best of us. I've been saying it so much over the last few weeks. Right. Well, apparently we've got, uh, Lewis, just to let you know, we've got somebody that I believe is uh, trying to... They are in the top TeamSpeak channel up there. And uh, Chev Matt, I don't know if you can see him up there in the gateway. Yep. And uh, apparently he's thinking about joining the league, or, he's go or did, I guess he did apply. So, um, I don't know, what do you think about dragging him down into the booth with us and maybe talking to him a little bit? As long as he can keep a cool head and he's not going to be boring. <laughs> well, let's, let's see what we can do here, give me a minute. Let me get things sorted out, I just got so much stuff open, I mean it's so hard to keep track of it all. Chev Matt, get ready. We may be dragging you down into the channel with us if that's okay. I mean, maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe I better check and see if he wants to. Probably a good idea. Uh, Chev Mac, is that okay? We drag you down into the channel with us here in TeamSpeak? Let me know in Twitch here, brother, because I don't want to drag you down here if you don't want to come down here. I could poke him. Uh, did already. Did already what? Oh, okay, the number. Okay. Do you want to come down into TeamSpeak with us? Or, well, okay, you're going to poke them? I'll let you do that. If you oh, need me? to move. Yeah. If you, uh, if he needs to move down here, let me know and I'll move him down. Alrighty. All right, well, anyhow, later we'll get back up to the race here. We're kind of losing track of things. Dog in fifth place, top of his class in the rough today, doing a super job out there. Uh, only one left out in the race here is Lewis Van joining me in the booth. Uh, was the only other rough out there today, had a mis misfortune in the race and get, did get spun and T-boned by someone. So uh, a lot of da too much damage to get fixed up. And... Uh, is out of the race, so unfortunately for him. Oh, well. 
Did he? Oh, he said, yeah, he wants to come down into. He's uh, talking to me in Twitch chat here, so let me drag him down here. All righty. Chev Mack, you got a copy. We're in TeamSpeak here, buddy. I drug you down into the channel with us. I'm not sure if he knows how to use uh, TeamSpeak. I think the default is push to talk. You push your left control key by default. Push it and hold it down and to talk. If you go up to settings, up at the top of TeamSpeak, go to settings and options. I, I don't know, for some reason this is it's not popping up I'm for me. I'm following right now. Okay. I'm following. I've gone settings, options, and I think. Capture, yes, capture. And yeah, for some reason selection. it won't. Yeah. Push to talk, continuous transmission, or voice activation detection. Voice acti activation works. It could probably use that for right now. That way it'll pick up your voice. Uh, but we'd like to get to know you. And And all right, dog running in fifth, sixth place, Jimmy Eifling doing a super job out here. Third in his class in the uh, BMW today. Wheel damage, still running seventh in the Skip Barber. Top of his class, the only one in the Skip Barber today. So he definitely has sewed up the win here uh, for his class today. So great job by uh, wheel damage. Foz Bender in eighth overall, but he is fourth in his class in the BMW. Uh, not sure exactly what happened to him at the beginning of the race, but he got many laps down. And Lewis Van, of course, out of the race. That's why I'm here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sometimes it's important to state the obvious. Yeah. That's what Renus, commentary is all about. Renus in third. And getting up here to second, Marcus Kramer now getting ready to get passed up by the leader. The leader coming up on the back of Marcus Kramer. Let's take a peek at this because, man, I'm telling you what, these guys are really racing it up right now. Well, let's see if he lets him by um, easily, knowing normal dogs of racing. He will do that by easily, but you never know. They could be after a bit of a scrap here. Certainly not going past Jack. Might just be looking for some clear track to to let him go through. Yeah, he might get him here on maybe on the long straightaway or Marcus. I don't know. Marcus is battling him. I think trying to stay ahead of him, but you know the inevitable is Kevin Binkley is going to pass him inevitably because Binkley just man so smooth on his marks, not taking anything away from Marcus Kramer up there because Marcus is a great driver as well, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe our leader is just going to kind of cut him a little slack here and say, you know, I don't need to pass you. I mean, I already got you three laps down. No sense in, like, pouring a little salt in the wound and putting you four laps down. I'm not too sure what how these guys are going for fuel as well, but there could be a pit stop in the works at some point. Oh, definitely. Uh, they, I'm sure they'll have to pit one more time before the end of this been a while since uh, we've seen Marcus on pit road as a matter of fact so knowing that maybe the leaders gonna hold off but not really a battle for position but a good battle here for Marcus to try to stay on the lead lap and Marcus uses the lap down car there of uh, Scott Fossbender to stay out ahead of our leader so not a bad thing Going back a bit, looks like there's a bit of a stoush going on, is there, between... Let me just check. I saw two cars coming, running in very close proximity back there. Uh, Renus and... Uh, um, Jimmy. Jimmy yeah, Eifling and Right. Renus. 
Yeah, that's not be running in close proximity. Yeah, not for, not for position. position. Right. I think what's just happened there is Rainus has gone past to put uh, Jimmy down another lap. Yeah. So Jimmy, Jimmy running uh, sixth overall, third in his class, and he is about uh, looks like he is about six laps behind. Uh, so, sorry Rainus. to interrupt, Rudy. Marcus Kramer on pit road. Marcus Kramer on pit road. Let's get Taking down to Marcus. Taking four tires. Oh, have I lost connection or has he gone off? Uh, he may have. Uh, I believe he, he left. So that's that's changed everything, hasn't it? It means that... Wow. Yeah. Give, given time, um, we should end up with... Um, everyone moving up a spot. Yeah, and they've got enough time. Most of them do have enough time to pick up a couple positions, so... Uh, well, man, that's unfortunate for Marcus. Don't know exactly what happened there, but... Uh, hmm. I'll pop into the race chat and see if anyone knows. I'll just pop into the in-game chat. Chef Mac, you got a copy yet? Figure it out. Uh, we're getting a beeping sound. Some beeping sound in the background or something. Yeah, so I've just got an update on Marcus Kramer. He's just going for a little rest break. He'll be back on track very shortly. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's one of the advantages of driving a car which is so much faster than everyone else is you can afford to have bathroom breaks and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sometimes they're much needed as you probably well know. Well, I did have to get rid of my jump earlier on in the race and I was stressing out about that, but I ended up coming in and just fueling it up and getting rid of that. <laughs> Not exactly a professional racing driver, but it needed to be done. Alright, Darren Q and still running into fourth position. All these guys looking to move up, maybe. Uh, if Mark, it looks like Marcus is back out on the track right now. Yep. Much needed break, and uh, you know, these guys have been running for an hour, over an hour and a half right now. And uh, that hour and a half, man, I don't know, bathroom breaks do come up. Uh, you might need something to drink. Uh, Sometimes personal things come up uh, in life, you know, something at home you got to take care of just no way around it so uh, but these guys do dedicate themselves to the endurance part of the dogs of endurance and I mean, my hats off to them I don't know if I could handle this two hours and 36 minutes let alone the five hour race that you guys run yeah, it's, you're it it's a level height thing you really got to like doing the endurance runs and well I've personally it's my favorite mode of racing the only thing I have about the league is I probably would like a bit more um, close combat on the track, but then that defeats the whole purpose of the safety. Right, right. But it is all about consistency, keeping the car on the track, being safe. In mind, you sometimes do see a good tussle of position, and quite often strategy plays a big part in these longer races. Well, I think, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about something here. Lewis, uh, are you excited about, you know, that we've got we've gained a few new members here in the league. Are you excited about the new membership? Uh, are you ready to go out here and maybe try to mix it up with some newer blood? More people to overtake me, that's what it is. No, no. extra people in. It does nothing against the original members but it does spice things up a little bit you know it breaks the usual mold of course I'm relatively new to the league I started at the start of the season this is oh, fourth or fifth week running with them. hello hello did I finally get this thing working yes you did great welcome well then great to meet you fellas yeah great to meet you Chev uh, so, what what is your intentions here? Are uh, you thinking about joining the league, or have you joined it? Applied, I should say. I have yes. Um, 
I actually, Marcus, uh, I live in the same town as he does, and I seen a post in the forum, so I just shot him a little email there. And uh, hook, line, and sinker for sim racing, I guess. I've, uh, I've sunk every penny I've had into building a rig over the last uh, few months. Uh, in real oh. life, in real life, you're talking, or oh, you're talking about a rig for sim racing. Okay, very yes, good, very good. Well, yeah, that's it. I was going to say, I find myself in a very similar situation. Of course, I've always loved the old racing games, but since I got into iRacing, it's really, really captured me. I've, I've been doing it for about three months now, and I don't quite have the money for a good rig, but I bought myself a new wheel and whatnot. It's addicting. Oh, absolutely. Well, tell us about your rig here, Chev. Um, well, I, uh, I guess to back it up a little bit, um, I've been, I was a, a Gran Turismo guy. Uh, for the longest time, so I, I had a 32-inch monitor, and I built a a frame out of wood, and I had this this old Logitech Momo steering wheel. So that was probably five or six years ago, um, but uh, I, it couldn't hold my interest. Uh, and um, uh, like Lewis said, uh, I, I racing just took it to a whole another level. Um, so since then, I, I have a G27. Um, steering wheel kit and um, I, I put a larger wheel on it about the adapter so I got a, a 320 millimeter wheel and uh, three 39 inch monitors um, and then obviously a computer to run it that's what I got so far uh, the G27 cool. is a very good base wheel that's what I run it's highly modifiable as well so I can see that you've obviously done that work to it yeah, I, I um, you know, I, I would like one of those Thrustmaster TH8 uh, uh, shifters there uh, to upgrade the shifter. I find the one with the G27 a little cheap, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, we're lucky in this part of the world. We have a, a store called Memory Express, and they have uh, a very, very good racing uh, rig that you clamp everything to with the seat and stuff. Um, I don't know if anybody's looked into that, but I'm very happy with it. Well, that's good for you. I mean, obviously, where I'm in the world, there's not exactly a huge sim racing community, but you can still go out and buy some decent bits and pieces for the rig. What about you, Rudy? Do you do any real racing? Or oh. do you stick to the booth most of the time? Well, I, as of, uh, I would say, about the last nine months, I really haven't had a lot of racing. Every once in a while, I do get a chance to get out there and mix it up with the guys. And when I get a chance, I take advantage of it. Uh, I'm really not that bad of a racer. Nowhere in the ballpark as good as you guys on these road courses. Not even, <laughs> I'm not even in the same class, <laughs> you know. Uh, you think you're bad, Lewis? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing, buddy. You ought to see me on the track. But I don't try to go out there and do something that, you know, I'm, I'm just not used to. And I know it takes a lot of seat time to get used to uh, running these road courses. Uh, as it does with any, any racing, you know, even if it's oval, seat time is the best time for you. Uh, you got to have a good rig. I just got a Driving Force GT, and I've had this for, well, about a year now. And, and I... I race it up pretty good. I, I can do all right, but mainly in the ovals. That's kind of where my forte is. And uh, But I really don't do a lot of racing anymore. You know, I, I, I'm into the broadcasting part of it. I enjoy this. I love it. I, I, I enjoy watching uh, how other drivers drive. And I've, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from you. Last week you taught me a tremendous amount, and I appreciate that very much about road course racing and about some of the cars. So thank you for that. But, you know, I've learned a lot about different drivers out on the track uh, by watching their driving styles, uh, watching their lines. Uh, you know, it, it, I, think, I think if it came down to push to shove, I think I could probably... Uh, if I could retain a lot of that in my memory, I can probably uh, go out on the track and use a little bit of that to help me get better. 
Indeed, of course, it's our turn to um, do it on the Oval next week at Talladega, so you'll probably be more comfortable with that than all of us, so it'll be complete oh, role reversal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, you know, I know Dog wants his uh, camera angles, but I'll tell you what, I've got some awesome, awesome camera angles for that track. So I'm really I looking... I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, well, these are actually uh, NASCAR you know, the ones that they actually use in NASCAR. So, and I think you guys will really enjoy them. I've got gopher cams and everything, so. <laughs> Woo. Oh, hang on one moment. Marcus Kramer, a slide coming out of the last turn. Oh, let's go take a look at Marcus. He gathered it back up. No, no damage on the car. Let's go back here and take a look at that, though. We're getting so caught up in our own conversation we're forgetting what's going out on the track and it is captivating stuff I can tell you. Oh definitely yeah. yeah we're uh, I'm right on him. Oh he did slide it up but didn't hit anything it gets right going again so you know there's a, a little trick to that, that that a lot of people don't know about and uh, I don't know maybe you guys know about it or maybe you don't. Uh, there's a little trick to that as far as uh, if you feel yourself sliding like that uh, hit the gas and the brake at the same time and it'll straighten you right out normally does I mean if you're mm -hmm. driving something like the rough with a big heavy rear engine thing this thing to do with that is just give it gas turn more to where you're going and do a pirouette but yeah that does generally work as a rule of thumb gas and brake yep. I think it was just a good example of Marcus's car control. He's definitely one of the better drivers out there by the oh, way of yeah. control. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you there, Chev. Are you excited about uh, giving it a whirl here with these guys? Oh, absolutely. I, um, uh, I'm still uh, way overwhelmed by um, all the things that that it takes to make this happen uh, like this team speak for example I've never used this program before it seems to work fairly well but uh, um, just you know I, I would love to just be able to line up and just go <laughs> but uh, learning learning the different um, things you have to do just to get to that point uh, that's what I'm focusing on at the moment right right well uh, it, it is a little bit of a learning curve for some folks. I think you're okay. I think you're, you're, you know, you're doing just fine. But some folks, it is a little bit of a learning curve, learning all the things involved in this to, uh, to uh, make make this happen. You know, Dog does a Ooh. lot of work for this. He even makes his own camera packs that he shares with me because I do all of his broadcasting. So he does all of that. He uh, does take pictures of the cars, and we do post them, as you've probably seen some of the, the pictures in the slide there uh, going at the bottom right of the screen. Uh, you'll see some of the different drivers' cars in there, and it's pretty cool. You know, he does a lot of behind-the-scenes work, and, uh, and this is what these guys really appreciate. They appreciate all the work that he does do. And, uh, you know, he tries to make it, as far as I'm concerned, probably one of the best uh, road course leagues out there. Now, their focus, and uh, I hope you're ready for this, the focus is on safety. So, you know, maintaining your, your position on the track, keeping it on the track, not off the track, uh, giving room to the other drivers, and, you know, letting, it, letting them pass you. You know, it's it's not a race for position out there. The points are pretty much maintained by safety on the track. So uh, that being said, uh, you know, what do you think of that type of, of deal that he's got going on? Well, I'm glad I, I came in here first off because I didn't realize that that was uh, a big part of the way it goes. I suppose if you're racing, yeah, sure, you don't want to be in the rhubarb very long because uh, that's one way to, to get your butt kicked out of the race. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I think that's that's something that may play well to me if I can um, uh, control myself. Um, for example, if, if the leaders, the fast guys, are doing uh, a minute 22 around uh, Laguna Seca in a GT3 car, um, I, I'm very unpredictable if I try to keep up with them. But if I go into a zone and I do you know, a minute 25 laps in a GT3 car, um, I seem like I can do that all day long. 
Um, so that's something I guess I'm gonna have to figure out when I uh, when I try it out. Absolutely. You'll, f you'll find with the length of these races that if you manage to keep it on the black stuff the whole time, you'll actually find yourself going right up through the order. A good example is what happened to me at Barber Motorsports Park. If you get the chance to go back and watch the league replay of that, I spun, did some damage, came back out, and just by keeping it on the black stuff for the rest of the race, I managed to come right back up through the field to finish fourth. So the way the whole league's set up is it's not just in points that reward safety, it's also it'll reward you on track position as well. Right. I guess I didn't mention that. <laughs> oh, my bad. You didn't get, you do get points for, you know, the safety part of it, it, it you know, overall, uh, you know, not just for position on the track, but, uh, and, and then you get uh, points for winning your class, you know, and so it, it, it's, it's kind of inviting and an exciting. A different way of doing the league and the guys really enjoy it here and I think that's why they all enjoy racing here it's kind of different yeah I'm definitely uh, eager to to learn from people uh, I've met numerous uh, users of iRacing um, that are willing to share you know replays and stuff like that so I can I can sit behind their shoes to to learn a better line through a particular corner on any given track and uh, I love that feeling of camaraderie that I racing you know we're all here because we we genuinely love and believe in in what I racing is doing and uh, the the wealth of knowledge to be shared is, is uh, it's fantastic Oh yeah, and you know, uh, one thing I will have to say about this league is they are willing to help you. They are willing to coach you, you know, and, and teach you. You know, if you've got questions, they'll try to answer them. And they've got some very knowledgeable drivers. Uh, and, and about any of the mods, too. You know, any of the, the cars and trucks and stuff that they do run, uh, they're pretty knowledgeable about it. So, you know, and like I said, Lewis uh, taught me so much last week. <laughs> he was up in the booth with me. He got wrecked out early and uh, was up in the booth with me like he is this week and uh, and taught me so much about it just just in the, I don't know, what was you in here? Maybe an hour, hour and a half last week? Something like that. And he taught me so much about road courses and some of these cars that, that I did not know, you know. I can't, for the life of me right now, think about what they were, but... Uh, looks like wheel damage on pit road with the skip barber may be his last pit stop of the day. Front goes up to get tires put on. That's yeah, so the skip barber, of course. Despite the small fuel tanks, have very good fuel economy. So this should be his last stop of the day. Yeah. Back goes Thinking up. Thinking about it, it might be, might be his only stop of the day. I haven't seen him on pit road uh, before. Yeah, he'd been on pit road once earlier. So this is his second pit stop yep. of the day, and he's away. Normally for most of these, yep. Normally for most of these cars, it'll be a two-stop race. Some of the ones that are a bit more thirsty might be three, and if you're running some ridiculous fuel map, it'll be one. But normally a two-stop race. Well, Binkley's only been on pit road once today, so oh, dog. Sorry, missing. I'm gonna have to catch you there, Rudy. Dog off, yep. Yeah, he is uh, was off the track just a touch right there. I think he kind of overshot the turn. Yeah, it's a very hard corner, that one. You come up over the crest that's completely blind. You just sort of have to look at the brake markers and remember where you keep braking because you can't see where you are in comparison with the turn. And wheel damage off. Briefly gets it back on track. Just a corner cut. You'll have to slow down for the um, penalty there. The dog moving over and letting the leader go by as Binkley puts him another lap down. I believe, let's see, that will make him 26 laps down to the leader. So the, as good as the rough is out on the track, no uh, no match for the F1 Williams out there today. Well, it's definitely the car to run. Well, but, you know, the, the thing like, like we were just telling Chev there is it's not about who's up in first, you know, to win the, the overall race. It's... Uh, multi-class is like totally different than oval uh you know being up in the lead of course he's going to win the overall win and the top of his class but there's 
uh, four classes running out there left in the race right now, so there's going to be four winners. Well, at the moment, the person who's going to get the most points out of this is Rainus because I think the points are handed out, the most amount of points are handed out in the largest class, and I don't know what his safety is like, but there may be a few added or deducted for incident points, but he should actually get the most points. Well, that's very... See, I didn't know that either. <laughs> so you're, you're teaching me again this weekend, Lewis. Thank you. Well, that's what I've been told. I, I haven't exactly seen it reflected in the standings, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's jump in there for a second. I wonder if there's something wrong with Dog's car there. Um, I, I saw a BMW zip past and we're on the corner quite quickly. I wonder if he's struggling with some uh, alignment issues in the front end or something. Well, he does have some damage on the front, so he may have uh, slipped. We didn't catch it, but he may have slipped and uh, had some contact with the wall or something. But he does I'll have damage. go back and see. I'll trace back and see if I okay. can find out. All right, thank you. It might be a typical dog performance. So he, he knows he's not the fastest out on the track, and he, he said that he's just fun to be on it, he, ha uh, happy to be on a track with other people. Uh, that's what he yeah. really enjoys. So, so Chev, he's probably just giving way. Tell me, Chev, uh, what do you think of this uh, actually being broadcast live? Uh, normally we do broadcast up to YouTube, but uh, Dog wants his done on Twitch. Uh, what do you think about that being on TV? Oh, it's it's great. It's it's a whole another level of immersion that just keeps making this whole concept better and better in my head. Um, uh, you know, you, you go on YouTube and you watch some videos of people with, you know, they have the cameras back from their gaming rigs and you start looking and you're like, holy cow, how, where does that screen, how do you do that, and, and all these things you just see from that, and then you, you get into it yourself and then there's a whole other level, it's, it's fantastic. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, dog coming down pit road now, let's follow along with him and see what uh, he has done here, may, may try to get a little bit of that damage fixed up. I uh, be don't believe he's in any danger of losing that position. Uh, Jimmy Eifling is about three laps behind him in sixth. Uh, Dog could take the time, actually. He's still running top of his class today, and he's got to be proud of that, this run here, Lewis. I know, uh, you know you were out of the race, and you were the only other one out there running the rough today, but... Uh, I think it's going to make him feel really proud here to get a win in his class today. Even without me being there out on the track, he was still keeping up with me. He was putting in good times. So there's a good chance he would have come out on top anyway. Mm -hmm. I believe he may be in there trying to get some of that damage fixed up right now. Uh, he does yeah. have I've quite a bit. I've traced back on the replay. I can't see anything apart from the fact that he found himself out breaking himself into turn one several times. Hmm. Okay, well. If we get the chance to ride on board with him at some point, maybe see if we can get a shot of that because that one is so hard, it's blind, all you've got to go off are the brake marks. You come up over the hill onto it and it's on you in a flash. Yeah. Well, I should have bookmarked it and I didn't, but uh, it was kind of like I wasn't on him when it happened, so I would have had to go back, and then I could have bookmarked it, but I didn't. My bad. Uh, I think a tell, too, maybe um, looking at his lap times there, um, just looking at what's on the screen right now, and uh, he's, he's 10 seconds off his fastest lap time, so I wonder if it might be an indicator of when it happened uh, based on his lap time. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I don't... Without me actually going back, you know, I, it's kind of hard for me to do it while I'm broadcasting, but uh, without me going back to try to find it, uh, we're just going to assume it's probably been just recently that it's happened. Uh, whatever whatever happened, I'm not sure. But I think he's going to try to sit there on pit road and get some of that damage fixed up, maybe? Or is he back out? No, he is back out. He's definitely back out there. That car looks to be behaving much, much better than it was before. Well, sometimes new tires does make a big difference. <laughs> Funnily enough, you say that because earlier on when he took tires, he was complaining that he shouldn't have taken tires and that it really upset the car. 
Yeah, it takes, how many laps do you think it takes to get them tires warmed up? It's really hard to say. I, I don't really notice. I'm one of those drivers that just drives off feel and I don't really know what the car's doing. Oh, he's coming back onto yeah. the road now. But so, I'd probably say, depending on your driving style, one and a half to maximum three laps. Also depends on what tire pressures you're running. Well, uh, if he's not, if he's not careful, he, uh, let's see, I'm showing, uh, well, I can't see how many laps Dog is ahead of Jimmy Eifling, but if he's not careful, Jimmy Eifling could get by him, and that, that would be for overall position, but, uh, you know, no big surprise that the BMWs would be up there running just behind the F1s. F1s are just, like, dominating here today. Of course, Binkley, no big surprise there, Binkley dominating. Yeah, I'm just going to pop into the game chat and see if I can find something out about what's going on with Dog. Alright. Hey, Dog, you know, I know. Back up. go ahead. Uh, another um, uh, side thing that um, uh, is brilliant about this game is <laughs> your, your willingness to open up your wallet to, to be able to do various yeah. things. Uh, I'm watching this track right now and I don't have it yet. And, uh, I keep thinking, oh well, maybe I'll go get it. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a money pit. Uh, it it does kind of attack the wallet a little bit, but uh, it's all in the, you know your your priorities in life, your preferences, what you enjoy to do. It, you know, it's a sim racing game, and like we always talk about, Chev is uh, you know this is about as close as some of us will ever get to the real thing. You know. Uh, there is a lot of real racers, real life racers in uh, NASCAR and, and, you know, all kinds of road course racers that actually do use this for practice. And because it's about as close to the real thing as they can get. And uh, so that being said, they are in there. And those of us that will never drive a race car, this is all we'll ever see. Yes, I uh, I will never give up hope that one day um, maybe I can be in a GT3 car or something like that, but uh, I totally agree with you. you. You work with the tools that you were given, and this is a dang good tool. It sure is. Yep. There's a lot of real racers that use this as a tool. If they're struggling with the track, uh, and, you know, I've, I've read this right off of... Uh, uh, racers that have said this about eye raising, you know, they if they're struggling with the track, they'll actually get in here and practice on that track to maybe learn a different line, or uh, see how a car may react around another car, or whatever, you know, whatever their their case may be. But they'll use it as a tool to make them better. Yeah, for anyone who follows the V8 Supercar series, um. One of the starring drivers, Shane Van Gisbergen, is a regular on iRacing. He's quite often got hosted sessions up. I've had the opportunity to ride, to drive side by side with him, going up mountains straight at Bathurst in a in a truck, I think it was. Now Darren Kewen spun coming into the last turn there, got it back going, and uh, he is heading for pit road now. And uh, dog back on pit road again. Or was I think he's away now? Yeah, he is away now, but he was back on pit road for one, another trip. So uh, I'm showing him he's been on pit road quite a few times. Yeah, he is on pit road. Uh, you know, he may have taken his car behind pit road though. I believe he did. So he he may be out of the ra out of the race. Uh, he still will win his class, though, in the rough today, beating you, Lewis. <laughs> and Darren back off a of pit road. Coming down to 30 minutes left in this race, folks. So uh, it's getting right down to it. They've been racing here for, well, a little over two hours now. So let me ask you this, Chev, are you ready for the endurance part of this? I mean, uh, you know, so there is some drivers in here, and I think you can actually pick and choose which one you want to run, but uh, they do have a five-hour race that they run on uh, Saturdays, and 
This one here, of course, Sunday mornings. Oh, and Darren way off course again. Uh, this one here that they run on Sundays at noon Eastern. And then tonight they run another one that is 90 minutes. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, some of the drivers might find themselves where they can't really run the five-hour one. But uh, what do you think about some of these long races? Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know that because uh, I have the. Sorry about that, Lewis. Uh, I didn't know. His computer went down. Okay, that's why dogs yeah. off the track. Okay, and it's back now. I think it's his computer went down because I I thought it was his computer went down because I lost TeamSpeak for a moment. I know the TeamSpeak oh. hosted on his computer. Right, right, right. Did anyone else lose TeamSpeak? I lost both of you for a minute there. Yeah. So what happened is his he the um TeamSpeak server is hosted on his computer, and if it went mm -hmm. down, then um we lose TeamSpeak. Right. Well, he's got he must have a heck of a com connection that. Uh, to run all that stuff through there, he's broadcasting, eye racing, running team speak. He's <laughs> got a heck of a computer, or a heck of a uh, uh, pipe coming out of that joint, going through the internet. I have a few words in response to that. Canadian internet. Yep, there you go. Yeah, so I think he definitely got very good internet there. Yeah, I think he told me he's got like a hundred meg connection or something. Wow, I could only dream of that. It's crazy. I got a 30 meg connection. That's it. Just imagine the broadcasting you could do with that. Oh man, think of the things I could run through the internet with that. Jeez, I you know I, I've got a monster computer. There's no getting around. I got a monster computer. Built it myself, and it's like pretty much got almost the top of everything. You know, I could go a little bit higher on the graphics card. But I run an NVIDIA 660, and it does great. Uh, I mean, I push that thing. It's overclocked, and I push it right to the limit. That was my computer back in the day. <laughs> but that's that's the moment, I'm doing a bit of a rebuild on it. Yeah, that's just the graphics card. The, processor, the motherboard processor, I built this uh, here just recently, and probably in the last three months or four months. And uh, the motherboard and processor I put in an i7 core. I mean, it's just amazing. It's got an uh, it's an Asrock motherboard. And it's got water cooling on it on the processor. Renaissance on pit road. Renaissance on pit road. Let's go down and check. Yes, it is and that probably be his his last pit stop of the day. No movement, so it doesn't look like he's taking tires. Hmm. But able to broadcast very, very good, you know, uh, a lot better than my old computer. It is a quad core, which I, I sometimes I kind of wish I would have went up to a, I think they make an eight core processor. But this does. I had an eight core at one stage. Yeah, this does just fine. Yes, I had the original AMD eight core processor when they first sprang it out, and it was this, oh, it was the greatest thing at the time, and it very quickly turned out that it wasn't as good as people made out. Mm -hmm. Hey Lapdog, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you in Twitch chat there. Just got home from work, huh? Very cool. Well, if you're just joining us, we got about 27, coming down to 27 minutes left in the race. Been pretty fantastic. Pretty good racing so far. Unless you make didn't have a very good race here. Yeah, yeah, Lewis had an unfortunate day. We've had a, a few few guys out of the race. Uh, Taurus was the first one out of the race. And uh, let's see, Francois, I don't know, how do you say that? Maj? Maj? Maj, I think. Uh, he was oh, a second one out. European. Then Lewis uh, was out, Lewis Van, and then Scott uh, Fosberger is out. Dog had uh, some internet issues and has fallen back to the sixth place now. But uh, we'll get back here and check on him. He is back up and running. Had some computer problems or something there. Got it straightened out. Back out here running. Uh, 
Well, I'm excited for you there, Chev, to see some new blood out on the track. Uh, be some new names for me to learn. So, <laughs> I always enjoy that. It'll be yes, good, to yes. good to see you out there turning some laps with these guys. Are you free later on today? Because, of course, we've got the one-and-a-half-hour race in a couple of hours' time after this. Yeah, I, I think... Um, uh, what track is it on, just out of curiosity? I haven't looked at the team page yet. Same track. We were on the same track for the entire weekend. So it'll be this one right here. Oh, okay. Well, um... Hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant too, right? I don't want to come out and... Uh, um, I have not gotten this track yet. I mean, that's no problem. I could go grab it right now, but... Uh, I have to maybe turn a couple laps and see how it feels because I'm watching these guys. It, it looks like there's a lot of uh, blind um, hills and a lot of off camber corners. That's a little scary. It, it isn't easy. I mean, Virginia International has been labeled, especially the, the Grand West layout, has been labeled as close as you can get to the Nurburgring on iRacing. It's a real tough course, but once you get out there, it's a real blast. Well, you know, with, with Marcus Kramer off of the track now, Reynas has moved into second place overall and top of his class in the, the BMW. And here's just to give the viewers an idea of how phenomenal Kevin Binkley is. We're coming up to the 15 minute mark to go and he's on his 141st lap. Am I like missing something here or something? Uh, um, wow! I thought I thought I must be missing something. I'm showing he's led 139, and I got 24 minutes left in the race. Ah, is there by any chance your replays might have gone back a bit too far? No. Definitely streaming live. That's strange. Yeah. I, I'm looking right, I mean, you can look on my stream, it'll show right on my stream. There's 24 minutes and 11 seconds left right now. Well, I've got, oh, you might be right. I think you are right. I'm probably looking at mine wrong. It's that yes, new. Yes, I am looking at mine wrong. <laughs> it's that new math. <laughs> Just kidding. I never was very good at it. <laughs> Which is exactly the reason why I dropped out of university. So oh no. Uh oh. No, it's all good. Kevin been cleared a slight slide coming out of, I think it was the first turn, but he managed to get back onto it pretty quickly. Yeah, he is, uh, now, just for the sake of everybody understanding that right now, you know, he is the leader in his class and the leader of the race. And he is 23 laps ahead of second place, Renus here. But Renus is the top of his class, so he will win his class today, providing he makes it the rest of the race uh, in the BMW. I think he needs a bit of a shout out. Getting involved in a, a wreck early on, which of course was my fault, um, but fighting his way back up to second place, I think it's a good example of the kind of racing that this league. Um, provides. It's a case of, sure you got in a wreck, but if you manage to keep it on the black stuff, you'll find yourself in a good position. And he's about to get overtaken here by the leader, and the leader will put him down another lap, so he'll, second place will go down 24 laps. So, man, I'm telling you what, Binkley just on a rail here today. Darren Q and he running a very good race too. He's on the same lap as Renus. Uh, he wasn't earlier, but he is now. And if he could get caught up to Renus, if Renus makes a really, really bad mistake, uh, he could maybe uh, get up there and challenge him for that top spot in the BMW class. He is 40. It should be pretty close. 44 seconds behind Renus right now, which is almost a whole lap, you know, three quarters of a lap. So.
So uh, hopefully, uh, maybe Renus does, you know, keep it out ahead. If he makes a huge mistake, Darren could, could be right up there with him. Of course, pit stops are out of the division. Both of them have made their final stops. It's purely a case of and Renus bring it home in one piece. Well, it's not in one piece at the moment, but can he try not to lose any more pieces? Right, exactly. I think he's out here. He, he's got that damage there on the right side, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the car any. He seems to be running okay. ride along with him in the cockpit here for a minute and uh, see if I can find it. There it is. Ride along with him for a minute and see what uh, what Renus is, uh, how he's driving. Seems to be hitting I know marks. that he's one of the later breakers into turn one. He breaks quite late there. Keeping it nice and tight around that turn. And again, breaking quite late into this right-hander here. This fast left-hand kick, a very rough little corner. You think you can go through there much faster than you actually can. I think it actually narrows on you on exit. And he's coming up on wheel damage. Hopefully this will be a nice clean pass. And indeed a nice clean pass up the inside and he'll have plenty of space for his braking into turn one. Coming in to clip the apex on that double apex turn. Heading on the, the roller coaster that is the next few sets of turns. You go downhill, uphill, downhill, sharp left sharp right, turning left slightly uphill off camber corner, back on the gas for a short straightaway then you uphill again tight right hander, flowing out for a double apex, oh Renus is around! Man he caught that grass and that's all it took to take him around. It is so easy to do, it's, those BMWs seem to be very susceptible to catching a wheel on the grass and going around, I know that's what I did back at at Barber Motorsports Park for week one of the season. But they are very prone to that. They have a big, heavy, rear-wheel drive car. Well, that could have been very helpful to Darren Kewen in fourth, but uh, Darren's back there 49 seconds behind Renus right now. Uh, Renus made that mistake. Yes, it cost him probably some off-track points, but now he's going to have to go back by wheel damage again. And let's see how he does it here going into turn one. And just so you know, that did allow Darren to close up to 37 seconds behind Renus now. Yes, but Renus has got the pace to, to pull ahead. He, he should be safe in that position unless something dramatic happens. 18 minutes left in the race here, folks. The leader going to be coming up on Renus here before too much longer to put Renus another lap down. So, you know, as, as well as Renus is running out here, he's no match for that F1. That F1 is just way strong. Someone who we haven't spoken much about and has been running out there very consistently and cleanly is Jimmy Eiffley. Yeah, he is, uh, he is doing a great job uh, running in the fifth place now and... Uh, he got by Dog. Uh, Dog's four laps behind him on the track right now. Dog having that uh, issue there with his computer. But, uh, he should Jimmy come up to fourth as well, actually, with Mark just being on track. Uh, yeah, maybe, but he, uh, Jimmy's a lot of laps down. I don't know if there's enough, if he can make up enough laps to get by Marcus, but... Uh, He's only going to uh, make up two. 
that's according to what I've got here on my on my um, tracking. He's only got two laps to make up, which he okay. should do comfortably. Oh yeah, easily. Yep. Okay. Didn't realize it was that close. He's definitely been the quiet achiever of the day. Yeah, he uh, has come from way back in the field. I was going to look real quick here. Uh, he started eighth in the field. Well, not way back, but eighth in the field. Here he is running in fifth and possibly going to take over fourth. Uh, he is running third in his class, and he will be fourth overall when he does pass Marcus Kramer. So, yeah, quite an achievement today coming up through the field. And I will say he is also very proud of that new paint job he's got on that car. And look at it, stunning, the Jägermeister. Oh, yeah, that is a nice looking car. Bright orange, you can't miss it. Well, I'm really looking forward to next week at Talladega. I think it's going to be uh, pretty cool. It's going to be very interesting indeed, and it's we this week's been very mixed as to what cars people have been running. So we're not sure what cars we're even going to end up with at Talladega, but there's a good chance we'll end up with a new um, Delara IndyCar DW12 coming in. Oh, okay, because I thought he uh, said something about it was going to be the... Uh the BMW. Only oh, one the, the only one class. No, definitely the, okay. the normal mixed class situation. The MX-5 will definitely be coming in to replace the um, Spec Racer Ford, which of course no one is running out there on the road at the moment. So that'll be replaced with the MX-5 Cup, I think. And then at the moment, then it's going to be an interesting mix as to see what else goes. I think it was looking like it might be the, the Williams, but then the rough hasn't got a lot of usage either, so it'll be quite close as to what what transfers through, but I'm actually really hoping that that Formula 1 car goes. As much as I like it, I can't wait to get my hands on that Indy car. Yeah. Around yeah, Talladega, it should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, DW the DW12, the newest Indy car there, is awesome to drive. Uh, I got a chance here a couple days ago to uh, run the um, um, at Indianapolis with it and it was it was a blast there it hooks up very good better than the old Dallara IndyCar yeah, I did a 60 minute race um, as part of my league we run both the IndyCars on the mixture of road nose we ran at Pocono last week and it was an absolute blast there oh yeah yeah, I haven't had the, I haven't had the chance to try it there yet. Well, I will say Pocono is one of the more fun places you can take it. You need a very good setup, but it's an absolute blast there. Mm -hmm. Well, Jimmy Eifling does move into the fourth place past Marcus Kramer, so great job by him. Uh, now still third in his class, but fourth overall. Jimmy being consistent, and that's what it takes here to. Just got to be patient and consistent, and uh, just make sure you hit your marks. Braking and, and throttle points got to be really good. And I know I explain this every week. The first number on the side of the car indicates what driver rating they are and their safety. If they've got no number there, then they are what's known as the alien level of license, and that is unbelievable something like 20 laps without a single incident point and Jimmy Eifling of course in that class with a lone number one on his car Kevin Binkley the only other driver in the field that holds that class as well with number 75 then there's a couple of people from the pro class uh, Marcus Kramer and Francois Maj and of course next class down Darren Cohen's in that class. I'm part of that class. That's how the system works. So now, you mean, are you saying your number can change? I think uh, Dog does numbers every three races on how many incidents you average per per corner. Yeah. And he uses that index, and it'll tell you how safe you are, and you get to put a new number on the side of the car. 
The only exception to that rule is the people running number 9 as their first number are the rookies. They have not completed um, three or more races. So we've got a few of those in the field. We've got wheel damage and of course Scott Farsbender who is now off track. All right, Darren Kewen in third, doing a good job, but he is going about to be passed up here by second place. Second place right behind him, Renus. And uh, uh, earlier there, we've seen where Renus had made a mistake and Darren had reeled him in. Now Darren uh, falls back a lap behind Renus, so no danger of Renus losing that second position overall and still top of his class. Actually, he is a couple laps ahead of Darren now. Darren must have come down pit road again, and I did not see that. I'll have a look at that on the replay, see if I can find anything out. They were on the same lap, and now I'm showing uh, Renus 24 laps down and Darren 27 laps down, so three laps separating them two. Yeah, he was on pit road for what looks to be an extended period of time. Ah, so it looks like he's actually gone off and grazed the wall at one of the um, corners. It's the, let's see, I think it's in between the, oh, it's on the entry to the last corner. He's gone off and given the wall a bit of a whack. Yeah, he's got an awful lot of damage on that car right now. So, man. Well, what I'll do is I'll set my, um, in-game in replay to focus on crashes and I can keep you updated on if anyone has a spin. Alright, yeah, we're at coming down to nine and a half minutes here of race left and uh, here in a couple more minutes we're going to get up on our leader Kevin Binkley and uh, watch him bring this thing to victory lane. Uh, keep you posted on everything that's going on there. Thanks to Lewis. Appreciate that very much Lewis. No problems. It's the most entertaining part. All right, so Darren Kewen in third, and then Jimmy Eifling in fourth. All three of the BMWs running second, third, and fourth. So obviously a very good class of car to try to uh, even stay in the vicinity of first place uh, with Kevin Binkley out there, the only one left on the track in the... Uh, F1 Williams today and he has just dominated the whole race. He's led 155 laps right now. Marcus Kramer led one in the race. And while um, it is a very stable platform and very easy to drive, this is not the easiest track to be a BMW driver. There's a lot of issues with visibility and you really got to work hard on that setup to get that car to want to turn into some of these tight little corners. The um, F1 car is another setup nightmare around here. Of course, those big wings on it, you think it'd be generating plenty of downforce around this place. There's only one or two corners go fast enough to get that air moving over the car and generate that downforce. Dogs moved into fifth now. Fifth overall, still top of his class in the rough. And uh, he did get by Marcus Kramer. Marcus going back to sixth. Well, we're losing viewers here like crazy, but uh, I don't know, man. This is the best part of the race to see who's going to win this thing. Well, we know who's going to win it. Oh, you never know. Something might happen. I race might have a glitch. True. Well, it seems like they've been. That's one thing that. I'm not too happy about with the iRacing services of late. There's been a lot of maintenance going on and there's been times when I've gone to jump on and it just hasn't been there. Like being American, they probably try to do as much of the maintenance as they can during times when they don't have such large numbers and of course, unfortunately for me, that's when I can go online. Well, I don't think there's enough laps for wheel damage to gain any more ground on Marcus Kramer, but 
my hat's off to wheel damage. He has drove his heart out here today uh, with that little Skippy Barber. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, he is. Uh, he showed that that car does run very well on these road courses. Yes, I'm very tempted to run it in the um, one and a half hour race later on, which um, I will be streaming to Twitch with my normal in car. I know Dog will be as well if anyone wants to tune in and watch that. But I'm tempted to run the Skip Barber car for that as well. All right, so we're getting down to it here. Six minutes left in the race, and uh, I kind of wanted to get back up with our. Well, let's go up here with our second place uh, car, Renus, right now. Uh, if I can find him on the track. Well, not that we have a drive of the day thing going on here, but I definitely nominate Renus for his efforts today. It's definitely drive of the day in my opinion. Oh, he's, yeah, he has really done a great job. Uh, uh, Dwayne Benzinger in Twitch chat there says that uh, a Dog and him will be driving the Skippy in tonight's race. So that uh, could be three of us. That could be impressive. Yeah, a 90 minute race and uh, you never know, maybe uh, maybe a, a good a good battle between the three of you. A, a good one. I, you know, I won't be able to broadcast it, of course, but it could be a could wind up to be a very good race between the three of you. If I can keep it on the track, I'm a little bit <laughs> dubious about as to whether I want to get out there because I haven't done many laps in it, and I do feel very very happy with that rough. Another one that's really ran good today is Darren Q, and I, you know, I, my, I, I got to give him a lot of credit for uh, the job that he's done there. He's got caught up a couple times and spun a couple times, but uh, still running in third with that car and keeping it ahead of Jimmy Eifling has been quite a chore for him. He is uh, running about seven laps ahead of Jimmy, but uh, you know, and Jimmy, another one. Jimmy's been very consistent, and. Uh, He's fallen back there a little ways, but like you said, very, very few incidents on the track here today. And well, you can never count him out. Oh, never, never. Always in the mix, you know, he's sitting there comfortably in fourth spot. It's not like he can gain or lose anything at this stage in the race, but he's always, always in the race. Never counts him out for moving up or down. Oh, I wouldn't say down, but moving up through the field. So it looks like we've just got the lone four, five, six cars left out on track, which isn't a huge number, but. And look at that wheel damage moving into sixth overall ahead of Marcus Kramer. So, man, he is just really ran well with that that uh, Skip Barber today. And I bet you he's enjoyed every single moment of it. Just watching that car go around, it's a lively little thing. I don't know what your pictures are on your end, Rudy, but I'm currently watching his car from the roll bar perspective, and it is very entertaining to see how hard he has to work. Let me see if I can uh, duplicate that. Go to the roll bar. Uh, I don't know if I have. Yes, I do. One great yeah. thing about the um, little Skippy car is that you can see the suspension working and all the mechanical. You feel like w you're part of the car. Oh, yeah. So he's really having to work that throttle really hard in this car to make sure that he keeps it stable. Yes, one thing I noticed about the, the Skip Barber car, um, it does not like 
coming off the throttle fully, uh, you, you definitely get lift off oversteer with that thing. You always got to keep just a little bit, and it's it's quite nerve wracking coming into corners and you're not getting off the gas 100 percent. It's a real driver's car. That's one thing you can definitely say. It rewards smooth, smooth driving. If you try to uh, ring it around by the scruff of its neck, it just says, "Nope, can't do that," and you'll find yourself off track or even worse in the hedge. Yeah, so there's. I was going to say it can be a real handful around here on this track, and particularly because there are a lot of spots where you feel you need to lift off, there's a lot of spots where you probably do need to lift off. I noticed there's uh, there's the, the Ford Spec Racer too is another one that really does not like to be overdriven. Um, I actually uh, am a little aggressive, I do like to feel it move around, I feel like it can tr control vehicles better that way. Uh, the Ford Spec Racer is definitely not on my book of favorites. Uh, because of that. It can be a real handful. I, I'm not a big fan of these little lightweight cars that have got a tendency to, to oversteer, but you can learn a lot from them. Yeah, Dwayne Benzinger in chat says, I use lift to rotate the skippy. So you guys, road racers, probably know what that means. I don't. Lift, I think what he's referring to is, can be one of two things, it can be that he's simply lifting off the gas and with the oversteer that you get from these cars it is quite a, a good way to get around corners. The other one is that some of these cars have actually got, I'm not too sure which ones, but have actually got the option to have reverse wing on the car which lifts the back end of the car up and you can get some pretty good turn out of it. Well guys, we are on a white, li white flag is out and Binkley taking the win here today congratulations to him great race by these guys i'm telling you what what a fantastic finish binkley bringing home the win here at vir south course congratulations to him rena's coming home in second top of his class in the bmw darren q in third second in his class in the bmw and jimmy eifling fourth uh, third in his class in the BMW. Uh, Dog coming home fifth. Dog being in the rough today. Uh, coming home top of his class, so he will be a winner. And wheel damage finishing sixth. Top of his class as well in the uh, Skip Barber. So, uh, guys, we're, race from everyone. we're going to probably try to get up here into the channel with everybody. And uh, we'll get a word in with everybody that's in there that wants to talk to us. So uh, if you guys want to move up there, uh, Chev, you want to come up, I'll, I'll drag you up there with us. And uh, just kind of listen in if you want, okay? Yes, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to part ways. It's quite late in, the part, in this part of the world, and I think I should probably get some sleep. All right, Lewis, thank you for the help in the booth tonight. You've been a tremendous help. Thank you very much. No problem. Hopefully it's a different story at Talladega. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I wish you luck there next week. Righto. Night all. Night. Take care, Lewis. Nice to meet you. All right, I'm going to move up there, and then I'll drag you up, Chev. All right, guys, uh, hold on a minute. I've got Chev here with us. Uh, we've got to meet with him. But we'll get to that here in just a minute. He's gonna. He, I brought him up into the channel so he can kind of listen in with us here. But uh, Kevin Binkley, do you have a copy? Yes, sir. Kevin, everybody out there is probably probably going to agree with what I'm about to say. You are just so smooth on whatever whatever car you're riding on some of these tracks, and uh, you got to. Man, is there like any secret or any in information that you could give out that would help anybody, uh, maybe in the league or out there that could be watching, uh, to to help them maybe understand what they need to do to make it run as smooth as you do? Well, it's really down to racing line. I mean, if you're not running the right line, no matter how what you're doing, it's it's definitely not going to result in lower lap times. Uh, you really got to focus on the fundamentals uh, 
find out what corners require what. Some are late apexing corners that'll really help you with the drive off. You know, some are long radius and double apex. There's a lot you have to study about the track first. Once once you get the layout down and the actual line that you need to run, then you can start focus on pushing it just a little here, a little there, but the main thing is slow in and fast out. And I know we all hear that, but it really means a lot. You really got to get your braking done before you turn because a lot of cars just don't allow for trail braking. And that's uh, really what what matters is slow in. And uh, with cars like the Formula One that have such high torque, it's so easy to wheel spin that you got to be real smooth on the throttle. All right. Well, congratulations on your win. I should have mentioned that first off, but great win out front. Uh, top of your class. Marcus kind of hung with you for a while there, and I don't know what happened to him, but uh, he uh, obviously left the server. And uh, But, you know, everybody chasing you all day long. Now, you had about a 25-lap lead over second place Renus, and... Uh, but you still that didn't slow you down any how much of a uh, of you know did you slow down if any knowing you had that much of a lead well i try to race as fast as i feel comfortable like i would if somebody was chasing me that just it keeps me interested and involved um unfortunately once i did realize i was that far ahead um i started getting complacent and Started, my mind started wandering. Next thing you know, I had a small brush with the wall twice, and that really started slowing me down. I decided, you know, I need to watch my incidents and stop going off track. So, um, yeah, near the end there, I started slowing down a little bit. But it was, uh, yeah, it's definitely wanted to take it easy just to bring it home after the second brush with the wall. Well... Yeah, it, it looked like, I mean, you were definitely the class of the field out there today. Uh, Marcus did lead the first lap and uh, slipped up going into, I, I think it was the first turn there after he completed the first lap. And you got by him cleanly as he uh, definitely took it out into the grass for a ride. Uh, yeah. And you took over the lead and never looked back. Uh, yeah, he, he definitely had an extremely fast car. I know he beat me out on qualifying and... Uh, he definitely had the pace. It's just this weather, man. It's just overcast, and the cars are just so slippery out here that uh, it's it's very easy to make one small mistake. And unfortunately, around here, you touch the grass, you're going straight into whatever barrier is there. So it's very easy to do. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, talking with us, sir, Kevin, and congratulations on such a great win out here at VIR. Uh, one of your favorite tracks. Do you like this uh, South Course track? No, can't stand this place. I'm glad to be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking forward to next week at Talladega? You know, it'll be uh, definitely a change of pace, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you probably don't know what classes you guys are going to be running in it yet until uh, after today's race is over and official. But uh, any ideas what you think you might want to race out there next week? Uh, that's going to be a really hard choice because uh, vehicles like the, the Williams and um, other GT cars that are going to be pegged on the red line, you've got to be careful to make sure it can make the race. So I'm actually thinking of something a lot slower. Maybe if the uh, the spec racer makes it or something else, that's uh, definitely what I'm going to be keeping an eye on is uh, that red line. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for talking with us, Kevin. Again, congratulations on, on a well-deserved win. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Let's see if we can get a hold of Rainus. You got a copy? Copy. Uh, Rainus, you come home top of your class today, second overall. Uh, we've seen a few times there you kind of slipped up and a uh, battle between you and Darren Q in there for the longest time at the beginning of the race. Uh, tell us about some of the, the racing that you and him were doing. Yeah, we were kind of at the same level, uh, almost all the races, but uh, some small mistakes took us um, way apart, but it, it was really fun to race almost half of the race with a 5 second, 10 second gap between us, so it kind of kept me on the road, but yeah, I did a uh, couple mistakes, uh, first time on the strike, so that happens. Uh, 
Okay, you finished second overall, but top of your class in the GT3. How was your car out there today? And uh, uh, tell us if the, if you really like that combination. Uh, you know, probably the track might not have been your favorite, but tell us about the the, the car on that track. The track is okay. Uh, first, I tried uh, the rough on this track and the Williams as well, but kind of didn't couldn't stick on the track with those cars, so. I choose the one that's uh, that fits me the best, and uh, at the very last stand, I took a league uh, setup on this car, and it worked really well. Well, it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it. Uh, hold on a second here. I'm trying to find a specific camera view. If I can find it, there we go. Okay. Uh, it looked like a lot of fun out on the track, but uh, if, if you had a chance maybe to pick a different car to run out there today, what would have been your second choice? Um, I kind of don't, don't know. BMW at the moment is kind of favorite for me, but, but uh, probably, hmm, yeah, I would stick with a BMW. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, well, congratulations on your win in your class today, uh, Renus, and uh, thanks for talking with us. you want to give a shout-out to anybody? Yeah, I would like to thank you, Darren, for a good competition. It was fun to ride this race after a long break, and, uh, of course, to my team, BFR, and uh, for the league, and for you for broadcasting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Renus, very much. All right, Darren, you got a copy? Hey, Rudy, yep. Hey, Darren, you ran really well there. You and Renus battling it out at the beginning. You were up front, and then he was up front. Uh, coming home uh, third overall, second in your class, uh, you know, did you think Renus just kind of outdrove you today? And, uh, you know, I know you had a little bit of damage on that car, uh, but do you think you did the best that you could, and he just beat you today? Yeah, Rennes is a very strong competitor, and it was a lot of fun. I wish I could have given him a little bit more <clears throat> competition towards the end there and been with him, but I just was pushing a little hard to try and catch him, and I think his pit strategy probably worked out a little better than mine. I split it into three, and I think he had went a little longer on fuel, but uh, I just wanted to apologize to Rennes and to Lewis. We had a little accidental contact in the beginning, and that kind of made me be a little cautious and a couple of uh, just slight off tracks, but I got myself into trouble on Oak Tree there twice, uh, damage on both sides of the car, and tried to you know get as much as I could repaired but the BMW is pretty pretty good on the track but just tough to see over that big front end it just feels like a big car uh, on this track right right well uh, great to see you out there you know you ran you ran your heart out today I know you did because uh, you tried to stay up with him for the longest time and you slipped up a few times too got a little damage on that car and how was it driving after you got that damage well, the car was a little bit uh, shaky there. Um, had to be definitely cautious on the corners, but the main thing with that BMW, you've already got that big nose of the car sticking out, and the blind corners are really hard to see, so with a little bit of damage that they couldn't finish fixing for me, I was totally blind on a couple of corners, so it slowed me down at least a two seconds, sometimes three, and I was just basically trying to stay on the track and not uh, not do anyone else any, any harm and just stay consistent. All right, well... Great job out there today, Darren. I mean, uh, you know, just a great race by everybody. Uh, this being one of your favorite tracks, or, or where's it ranked? Probably down on the low low side of the list, don't it? Well, it's probably in the middle somewhere. I mean, it's a great scenic track. I do like the full course a little a little better. Sometimes it's a little boring for people, but the short the south uh, is definitely challenging. Uh, like Kevin was saying, it's so technical, and you don't have any room for error. Uh, one little hair off of the uh, track, and you're um, you're going into the wall. And exactly what happened with me, I just took a little too hard and wide on that oak tree, and and went somewhere else, and uh, you're off, and uh, it just throws you uh, for a loop. Well, all right. Well, good job out there. Congratulations on your second place in the class, third overall. And uh, thanks for talking with us. You want to give a shout-out to anybody or a thank you? 
I just want to thank all my competitors out there today and, and what a great race. It's such a challenge with these different classes and speeds of cars. You have to be on your game and good communication and a lot of respect out there with uh, the vehicle. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's definitely something that you had to keep your uh, mind on it. So just all of us, uh, all the, the league that was out there racing and Michelle for working on the setups. I know I used his as well and tweaked it a little. It definitely uh, helps us all the work and the practices and everything and, and uh, to you for the broadcast and just appreciate a great day racing with uh, all my competitors all right thanks darren appreciate it very much and again congratulations all right uh jimmy eifling you got a copy yes sir jimmy wow you come back of the day you kind of got mired back in the field a long ways back and you come marching back up through come home fourth overall third in your class uh, how does that make you feel for coming up, coming back up through the field and having such a great finish? Uh, it's okay. It was just I just wasn't my head wasn't in it today for some reason. Um, I don't know. It just I just had a weird feeling when qualifying started. I just couldn't get in a groove, and um, it just continued in the race. You know, I had a lot of incidents, which is you know that bugs me a lot. So I've just kind of. I started driving kind of cautious early because my head just wasn't in it, and then driving cautious that caused me to make more mistakes. So I was just trying to get to the end. Yeah, it, it's a long race, uh, two two hours and thirty five minutes. Uh, now tonight, are you going to run tonight in the hour and a half long race? Yeah. I'll be okay. There. All right. Well, uh, what what car are you planning on running tonight? Um. I'm not sure yet. I'm just debating. Probably I'm probably gonna stick with BMW since I generally like to stay with the same car for the whole weekend. I can't say as I blame you there. Yeah, you kind of get used to the way one car feels, and then when you throw another car in there, boy, it really messes you up. But uh, great run out there today, Jimmy. Congratulations, third in your class, fourth overall. You want to give a shout out to anybody or a thank you? Uh, just thanks to the regular, you know, the guys for being here. Um, um, Binkley for always putting on a good race, and um, you for you know putting the show on. And thanks, Tim. So that's about it. All right, Jimmy. Thank you, and uh, again, congratulations. All right. Okay, dog. You're next on the list here. Uh, you come home fifth place overall. I know you had some issues there. You lost your uh, your computer, internet, or whatever. Had to do a restart. We lost you in team speaking the whole nine yards. Yeah, something was going on with my internet. It still is actually right now. It's just really going really laggy, spiky, and like most of the time when I'm in a server, it my because you have your lag, your ping, your skew, and all that, all of those are green or non-existent. And I was sitting in full red bar for the ping for quite a bit of the race. So it was causing issues where it was, wasn't was counting laps, wasn't giving me lap times, wasn't counting sectors and all that. And I was jumping around on track, apparently. So I figured, okay, I'm going to pit and see if doing a quick restart of my modem would fix it. And that did, didn't really work it helped it a little bit but probably once we're done here i'm going to be making a phone call to my service provider to see what's going on yeah we seen you uh, one time there it looked like you were about four feet up off of the track like yeah. in midair <laughs> uh we seen you doing a lot of blinking but uh mainly what i wanted to talk to you about though dog you come home top of your class today beating lewis van uh great feet and again you know like i said uh, dog, you know, you have come so far in your driving abilities, your skill level has increased tenfold since uh, I've started to, to broadcast for you. Just great racing out there, and I know you enjoy yourself. Sorry you had internet issues today, and, you know, hopefully you get that straightened out. But uh, tell us about the rough car and how it felt on you on the track. But most importantly, I want to know what happened. How did you get that damage on the front of that car? Oh, the damage on the front of the car, that was just me having a, basically a mind of trying to figure out what was going on with my internet at the wrong time, and I missed the breaking point and ended up just going into the wall a little bit, 
did a quick little repair. There was only about a minute and a half worth of repair, so it wasn't really bad. Car still felt fine, but I really regretted after I did. I was running the first, let's say, five laps or so was really slippery in that, mm -hmm. and then it just settled in and drove nice up until that point. And I figured when I was going to do the repairs, I might as well change my tires, and I regretted that from then. And every set of tires since then and the rest of the race it was really sketchy about where I was going to get grip and where I wasn't so it was one of those races where I would have probably if I was to do it over again I wouldn't have changed my tires at all just stop for fuel and continue on but that's one of those things where you'll learn as you go um, otherwise track was good the other competitors on the track were excellent like everybody was given way when needed or when it made sense and lots of patience out there especially from the guys driving the F1s they'd just wait along and say no I'll wait until a straightaway because they already had us on laps anyways and it was just really great to have the competitiveness that was in there for the within the groups and even those that weren't in the direct fight for a position it, the respect with all the, all the other drivers was just really great and that's what makes this league wonderful to be with Absolutely. Well, we'll get back to you on uh, more of that after we. Uh, I want to talk to wheel damage, but uh, I'd like to get back to you and talk to you a little bit more about uh, some of the newcomers into the league. Uh, you actually got, we got one of the guys in here that apparently just joined while you guys were racing, and uh, uh, Sheb Mac, but, uh, and maybe we'll get a chance to talk to him too. But, uh, Dog, you come home in the top of your class today, amazing driving brother i mean that was just awesome to see you up there in the rough now uh knowing how that rough handled for you today uh it, will you run that tonight or are you planning on running the skip no. barber i have this thing where i won't race the same car consecutively so like last night's race i was in the spec racer ford this one i chose the rough because it's one of the cars that we had in the lineup that had the Max Speed TV paint that I had done for you. Mm -hmm. And then tonight I'm actually going to be in the Skip Barber because I'm expecting a pretty good competition with Dwayne Benzinger and I and for this evening and whoever else is in the Skippy because we've been running really close for most of the practices this week. Mm -hmm. Well, he was in Twitch chat saying that you guys were going to be in, in a pretty tight competition there, and I believe... Um uh, Lewis said he was going to be running the Skip Barber as well, so there might be three, at least three of you running the Skip Barber, and uh, hopefully all goes well for you guys tonight, and you guys have a lot of fun racing each other. Oh, yeah. all Like I said, all the practices this week so far in the Skip Barber has been phenomenal battles all the way through whoever was racing in it, so I'm really looking forward to that one tonight. All right. Well, again, congratulations on your win of your class here today, Dog. And we'll get back to you here in a little bit. We're going to try to get a word in with Wheel Damage. Maybe he might he might want to get out of here. I don't know. But uh, Wheel Damage, you got a copy? Yeah, let him clear it. All right. Uh, coming home in the Skip Barber today, uh, We only seen I only seen you uh, slip up that one time. Uh, how did the car feel for you out there today, and how much of a factor was the weather for that Skip Barber? Yeah, how about how was that uh, Skip Barber, that little Skip Barber? It saw off uh, a few big brothers today. I was really pleased with it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the weather, um, I think we were all a bit surprised when we logged in and saw it was uh, overcast. Um, about the hour mark, it got very slippery. Uh, two or three offs, I think. You, I'm glad you only saw the one. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, it was good fun. Good fun. Well, it looked like a blast. Uh, I, I think that car is uh, starting to spark a little interest here within the league. Uh, the guys are starting to maybe feel like, uh, you know, it's a little bit slower. It's more of a driver car. Uh, you got to be a good driver to drive that, you know. And I know, I know, you know. Kevin talked earlier there about the F1 being uh, pretty slick. Uh, how did the, you know, that compare to uh, what you're using now with that Skip Barber? What do you? Uh, how would you compare them to? Oh well, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, totally two different animals. Um, <laughs> when when I've 
Williams overtook me and went into a turn. It was uh, it was like it was on rails. <laughs> I was very jealous at those moments during the race. Um, I must give a shout out to uh, all the drivers, especially the the Williams drivers for being on the ball, coming across me. My car was sometimes invisible to them when we went over the brow of a hill, and uh, they did well to avoid me. So, uh, big shout out to the rest of the drivers. They did a great job. All right, Will Damage. Well, thank you for talking with us, buddy. And uh, you want to give a thank you to anybody else that you can think of, or have you thanked everybody you think? Oh, only the usual suspects, uh, Michelle, for organizing, uh, yourself, your good self for broadcasting, and um, I guess uh, Sir Tim Berners Lee for giving us the World Wide Web royalty free. So uh, thanks to him as well. All right. Thank you, buddy. Good job. Uh, Dog, getting back to you now, uh, you've got a, a few new members, apparently, and a couple today. Uh, is there any advice that you could, uh, you, you want to give them over the air, or you want to keep that personal? Uh, the biggest thing, especially since we run very random-seeming categories of vehicles together on fairly often unused layouts on tracks. The best thing I can say is try to make it out to some of the practices. We do host 10 practice events every week during the weekdays and they're open to the public. Anybody can come in. That's where we try get, getting some people used to how we run the, our re events and there's lots of the members that'll help you out and while you're in the practice. That way you're ready for the races on the weekend. Well, uh, Sheb Mack has joined us in here. Uh, he joined us in Twitch. Apparently, he is a neighbor of Marcus and uh, is really, really, really excited. Uh, he helped uh, Lewis and I in the booth for a while and uh, really excited about getting started. Uh, Sheb, Mack, Sheb Mack, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, and I'm going to just give the floor to you and, uh, and kind of explain to the guys here what you've seen and what what has really kind of turned you on to the, the racing with these guys well i think um, um you can have you can have all the equipment you need the program and everything else but uh i love the idea of a of a structure um, a time that um, there's a time to practice there's a time to race uh, i think it's something that i can fit into my schedule and keep going with so th that really makes me excited well, I, I can't say as I blame you there. It's, uh, you know, like we talked there uh, on the broadcast, uh, you're probably not going to find many, uh, you know, leagues that run the way this one runs, the different classes, uh, you know, the respect out on the track that are given to each other, whether you're fast or slow, it doesn't matter. Uh, the winning of the classes and the safety is, is the most important thing, communication. And, uh, you know, even though dog doesn't uh, require you to be in team speak, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I think it does kind of make it a little bit better that, uh, you know, if you're in here to communicate with the drivers, sometimes the on-track communication, it's hard for you to push that button and talk when you're trying to make a turn and shift. And, you know, there's just too many variables there. So, uh, but I wish you the best of luck with this league. Uh, Chev and uh, you know I, th I think you're making a good choice by coming here thanks a lot Rudy um, um, I hope uh, uh, I can uh, contribute some to this league also uh, I, I like the fact that uh, there's a lot of Albertans here and um, I'm looking forward to it all right well thanks for talking with us Chev anything else you want to say there dog I was just gonna say definitely welcome to the league glad to interests you and we're always looking for more people regardless of whether they're local here or all around the world we have quite a few people like we have a couple from Australia the UK all over the world that are in the league but yeah there is quite a few of us Canadians and Albertans actually that it's actually kind of interesting that you you live down by Marcus and I'm just up in Edmonton so I'm only a couple hour drive away from you as well So. Yeah, I guess on a side note, thank you very much, Doug, for, for all your hard work there. Rudy was explaining all the things that you contribute to make this league possible, and uh, I much appreciate it because a newcomer coming in, uh, knowing that a lot of this stuff is just taken care of, all you have to do is uh, 
uh, not crash. Uh, <laughs> it makes it fun for my for my end of things. Oh yeah, and that's one of the reasons why, especially for the new guys to iRacing, that that's one of the reasons why I make sure that all of our events have one free car in the lineup at all times, so that it saves some of the cost. Because I know iRacing can sh look very e expensive for many people, and if you don't have to worry about do I have the car for this week, especially since we change cars every weekend. It, it saves a lot of the worry there. The only thing you have to make sure of is the tracks. And we're definitely very understanding if you don't have all the tracks to run an entire season. We're fine with that. All we ask is just run three events in a season. And considering we run three events every weekend, if you have even just one of those tracks, you could hit all three events. There's your minimum requirement. So we try making it nice and easy for new guys to eye racing as well as the seasoned professionals, well, seasoned veterans of iRacing as well. All right, guys. Well, thanks, and uh, we will see you later on then, and uh, we're going to get out of here for this broadcast. Thanks for staying with us there, uh, all the Twitch viewers. There was quite a few in Twitch chat with us, and uh, enjoyed having your company. Appreciated it very much. Thanks for tuning in here at Max B T V on Twitch, and we will see you later tonight on YouTube. Hopefully you do uh, follow us over on YouTube. We will be uh, broadcasting another race tonight, I believe, at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So uh, tune in then, and we will see you, hopefully we will see you then.